Hello everyone and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Shibboat and in this tutorial I'll be going over the tin processing chain. As usual, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help make this tutorial series visible higher up in search results. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otaku showboat, follow me on Twitter at otaku showboat, and visit my website at otaku showboat.com. You can help support my continued existence and help accelerate the production of these tutorials by becoming a patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. You can also support Pyanodon and the mod pack development at patreon.com slash Pyanodon. As a disclaimer, Pyanodon's mods are in a constant state of flux, so any numbers I present may change at some point in the near future. The mods for this particular save file that is being presented today are functionally identical to what is currently being used for my stream save. It is the first stream save that uh, I have done through Twitch. The mod list is available on my stream schedule page, which is linked down below this video. The notable exception being that I have the Infinity mod enabled for this particular save to help showcase this processing chain. So with that, let's actually get started. So the tin processing chain today, it's a little long. It's a it's a little long. So we have a quite a few things to go through today. So the chain will start off with screening or into G1 and G2. Uh, and then you convert the G2 into G1 and that's pretty much your end of red science. That is pretty much your end of red science. If I actually go into the tech tree and I bring up tin ore processing, you sort of only have access to the grade one at red science. Green science gets you up to your first molten recipe out of tin dust. Blue science, of course, heads up all the way through to high grade. Or at the very least, through high tin concentrate. It goes up through high tin concentrate, and then it takes yellow science before you actually get access to high grade and centered. Again, just reiterating that disclaimer, things may change. So, definitely bear in mind, uh, tin is a little different than the iron and the copper that we have previously gone through in that this particular chain, like the quartz chain, does not give you access to high grade at chemical science packs. Uh, the highest you can go is through high tin concentrate. Uh, and then from high tin concentrate at utility science, you get access up to centered. So, as I had mentioned, green science will give you access to processing of grade 1 all the way up into tin dust. You get your grade 1 into 3 in a screener. This gives you rejects that cycle back into grade 1. Now this is what's known as a geometric series, uh, and you have to do uh, geometric series math in order to solve for the total sum that you will end up with uh, of your G3. Uh, so do bear that in mind. You have to take into account uh, this uh, loop going back into G1 uh, here. And that this will be the first time in general that you may see one of these geometric series that feeds back into a previous product. Uh, and they are quite common on the uh, chains to come. Uh, once you have all of the G3 accounted for, and all the buildings to make the amount of G3 that you need. Uh, that gets converted directly into G4. G4 then gets converted into tin dust in a ball mill. And that is then used to make your molten at green science. From there, at blue science, you get your tin dust into concentrate plus rejects. 
the rejects get converted into powdered, and the powdered goes into solution and slime. The solution goes into bottom and middle pulp. So the solution now goes into bottom and middle pulp. Excuse me, into bottom and middle pulp. The middle goes into slime. So more slime. And the bottom goes into concentrate. Now the slime that we're left with, the combined total of slime from the middle pulp and the powdered tin, uh, that gets converted into slime overflow and slime overflow into pulp one and pulp one into concentrate. So we've got three steps here giving us tin concentrate. So three sources of concentrate. So think of everything from tin dust eventually makes its way into tin concentrate. And there's no feedback loops here uh, as well yet. The tin concentrate goes into high tin concentrate, which this would be what I just pointed out, gets, uh, goes all the way down to high tin mix. So if we look back at the tin ore processing three, you can go all the way up to high tin concentrate. So that's where it will end at Blue Science. You will end here at Blue Science. At Yellow Science, you are then able to take your high tin concentrate, convert it into pulp 2, pulp 2 into pulp 3, pulp 3 into a high tin mix, and a high tin mix into high grade tin, and then the high grade tin can be reduced and then centered. Uh, always remember that reduced into centered is a two centered out per one unit of reduced, so it will always give you more molten tin going into centered. It will always give you more molten going into centered from reduced. Where can you get plates out of this entire process? You can get it, the plates from the ore, from the grade one, from the grade four, and from the molten. Uh, so you technically have the option at green science to get plates out of grade four and you may want to do this or you may not because it's just one extra step to get into tin dust and do your molten tin processing as for molten it comes out of the tin dust the tin concentrate the high tin concentrate remember this is where you end on blue science so tin dust tin concentrate high tin concentrate so basically green science for tin dust the highest at blue science for the high tin concentrate high grade tin reduced and centered so centered basically for your yellow science so starting things off with the early game, of course, in the very early game, you will need tin prior to setting up something like this, because in order to make the actual vanilla furnace line, you need access to splitters uh, and ideally undergrounds. Uh, since you won't have that in the early game, just remember that you can always do something a little akin to that as your setup to feed into some furnaces, your initial tin until you can pick up your logistics tech to give you access to splitters and undergrounds to make something akin to this. Uh, you will need tin in the pre-science phase of the game in order to make the soil extractors specifically uh, that are also used as an ingredient for the uh, crystal mines, so you can get quartz. Uh, the soil extractor is also used for soil, which is an ingredient for the Relesia, not Relesia, the Fawagi plantation uh, that you will need as well to get mushrooms. So mushrooms and glass sort of are locked behind having an initial amount of tin plates. So definitely bear that in one in mind. You can refer to my pre-science walkthrough 
uh, where I discuss and go over the production of the initial tin and everything else leading up to your first handcrafting of red science. If you make a vanilla furnace array, it will look somewhat like this. Bear in mind that this particular furnace array is going to include 24 stone furnaces because it's actually ever so slightly more than uh, 22 for a yellow belt. So it will be 24 to fully process a yellow belt of uh, tin or in. Mining a yellow belt of tin or in, for reference, will be the first time that you need an outside fluid to do mining of an ore that you will come across. This fluid is going to be steam, uh, and for a yellow belt, the amount of steam required come, can come from three boilers. Three boilers worth of steam uh, will be more than enough to cover a yellow belt's output from 30 mining drills. Uh, and the reason for that, of course, is that it is a small amount. If I can find a tin patch here, it is 10 steam per mining operation, uh, and it ends up being about uh, 150 steam per second for a 15 per second yellow belt out. Uh, and boilers give 60 steam per second per boiler. Anyway, this will end up giving you 1.5 plates per second uh, through this method until you get access to your advanced foundries at coal processing 1 uh, and can start doing the hot air processing uh, from the ore to give you a nice little bonus of 2.25. This will be more than enough uh, to cover your tin requirements for some time, uh, I would say, until you set up your circuit one automation. Uh, and as you can see, this is definitely a nice little boost here. Now, red science, you've picked up tin processing one. This gives you access to the screener and jaw crusher recipes. Uh, this will in effect, look similar in mechanics to part of the iron chain, but it's going to use the machines similar to the copper chain. So we're going to start with the screener this time, similar to the copper setup. So copper goes screener into jaw crusher, whereas iron goes jaw crusher into screener into secondary and impact crushers to go from your well your screener does give you the g1 and two and three and you have to go back into g1 here you're going to start with one and two and go back into one and it's the jaw crusher phase that you're going to get some stone that you're going to have to deal with in some way shape or form and that's where things end that will give you approximately 3.75 g1 out for a yellow belt in at this point in time uh, so bear that in mind it will be about 3.75 and if you process that into plates of course you should use the hot air recipe because you have access to it and not the non-hot air recipe, this will give you three plates per second. So, in comparison to the hot air, it does give you that extra 0.75 for doing this, for building six jaw crushers and four automated screeners. It may or may not be worth it to you. It may only be worth doing uh, after you set up your circuit once. So I would suggest doing this after circuit ones. In fact, in general, I would suggest setting up your red science or processing of the ores that you are currently mining after getting your circuit one production automated. Uh, that is my humble opinion that I would say is uh, do it after circuit ones. You're going to need a fair amount of tin uh, to automate your circuit ones. Now, from here, going into the green science, 
uh, you will convert your grade 1 into your grade 3 and your beautiful tin ore rejects. And the rejects will go back into 1. So part of the reason why there's four screeners here is because we have to make sure that there are enough screeners and enough secondary crushers to process the geometric series here. So definitely bear that in mind as well. From here, your combined total of G3, which I'm not going to do the math on screen for this geometric series to determine exactly how much G3 comes out of here, just know that this many, this many, seven washers will be enough to process the amount of G3 that you have uh, coming out of that. Uh, it will wash directly into G4, which you do have the option of processing your G4 into plates. I would not suggest this if you have access to borax and graphite, which you should buy green science, have both of these. Uh, you need graphite for circuit ones, and you need borax, of course, as well for uh, lots of things. Lots of things you will need borax for. Uh, you will need it for your green science anyway. Uh, to get the boron trioxide for your optical sets uh, for, yeah, the uh, lab, whatever it is, for the uh, green science. So, I would always suggest going straight into molten on the tin from here, uh, and this will be a nice little uh, boost in production for you. I have not, of course, done uh, that math specifically. This is a Mark IV arc furnace, so ig ignore the speed on the numbers here. But just know it'll be enough. It'll be more than three. Uh, a fair bit more than three, I would say. Going on from here, at Blue Science, you can now create Tin Concentrate. It is a 20% output here at this step. Otherwise, you will always get a Tin Reject from here, from seven jigs. Four automated screeners will convert those Rejects into powdered tin and tailings dust. So bear in mind, you'll have to deal with tailings dust. Oh, and then back here, converting your tin dust into tin concentrate and rejects, you're going to need a fluid. You will, you are going to need a methyl isobutyl carbonyl, or MIBC. MIBC. I have built something down here for MIBC uh, to, sh to showcase what you need for MIBC. MIBC is only going to be used for the tin and titanium ore processing chains. Uh, it will only exist for these two. So definitely bear that one in mind. Uh, this is going to consume some copper, some petroleum, and some acetone. So you are going to be spending a little bit of copper to get more tin. So weigh that accordingly, that you will be spending some copper to get more tin and more titanium. In my opinion, it is always worth spending the inputs for these going into the higher efficiency processes. Uh, copper in particular, at blue science in particular, where this becomes uh, the issue where you have to actually set this up, you can ground bore copper relatively easily uh, and make as much of it as you want. In fact, the blue science copper chain is going to give you significantly more copper than you probably know what to do with. Uh, and the outside inputs here on the copper processing chain are like not an issue. They are a non-issue whatsoever. So I would say use some of your excessive production of copper at this point in the game uh, to get yourself some more tin and more titanium and scale up your uh, circuit processing. That would be uh, very ideal at this point. So that's the copper. What about the petroleum and the acetone? Well, acetone, frankly, the easiest way of getting acetone uh, reliably is through tholins. And at this point in the game, 
at Blue Science, you have access to Mark II stuff by now because you have access to Circuit 2s by now. You can make Mark II Tholan collectors and Tholan plants. So definitely, if you haven't set up Tholan based acetone by now, you're going to want to. Acetone's going to show up in a few places along the line. Uh, in fact, I had set up acetone on my own stream save when doing uh, some work on the high-grade iron chain, so definitely bear that one in mind as well. So, acetone straight from Tholans. It's just power. That leaves petroleum gas. Now, petroleum gas has this nifty little recipe to make it out of aromatics and hydrogen. Now, as I've mentioned previously, aromatics can be come directly from mushrooms and relisia. They can come through another method. Uh, this method is actually a methanol recipe. No, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of something else. Excuse me. I'm thinking of something else. The other aromatics recipe is here in this gasifier, this recipe. In fact, that's why I'm thinking of that uh, methanol recipe is because uh, of refined sin gas. So this is a little bit of a chain. So bear with me briefly while I explain this. Uh, this is also in a gasifier. So let's do this here. And then refined sin gas is also, this is a rectosol, if I can remember what the rectosol building is. Okay. This is three buildings. This is a bit more. Than just, you know, the one building. But bear in mind, this is going to be fed by organic matter and an exolate, ultimately, and not almost a full yellow belt of mushrooms and Relesia. Bearing in mind, Relesia is also going to need its own set of outside inputs to make, including hydrogen uh, in particular, and uh, hydrogen and soil and whatever else you want to use to try and get Relesia faster. So this by itself, while yes, these are organic products that go into these aromatics, this is a process that will have a relatively large footprint sitting behind it for these biotics. This process gives twice as much aromatics overall. Hydrogen is free. It is just electrolyzing into hydrogen and you're going to need hydrogen anyway to make your petroleum gas uh, up here so that's fine the organic matter if you you get a lot of this out of byproducts by this point in the game uh, particularly if you are doing ground boring your guar processing is going to give you a lot of organic matter uh, more than you will ever know what to do with uh, and are probably burning a lot of it by now uh, if you are processing guar for drilling fluids or ground boring, but if you're not doing that yet, uh, organic matter is completely free out of logs. Uh, it's a recipe straight up logs into organic matter in a wood processing unit. You're going to be doing that anyway to get uh, carbon dioxide to do the carbon dioxide recipe for logs, uh, because that is incredibly net positive on the uh, carbon dioxide and it gives you access to frankly the best log recipe in the game uh, to get wood so you'll have access to as much organic matter as you will ever need and that just leaves the refined sin gas refined sin gas has this nifty little recipe for sin gas and methanol into refined sin gas it gives you a tiny little bit of water a little bit of co2 and some acid gas that you can actually either burn all this, sinkhole all this, or, uh, you know, make some 
beautiful sulfuric acid out of that acid gas. To get syngas and methanol, there is this very convenient recipe that is also organic matter in. So 20 organic matter in, there are let's say 25 organic matter in, because note that this is 150 and this produces 100. Uh, so you will need two of these uh, to feed this fully. Not like you will even need to feed this fully to begin with. But uh, yeah, so 25 organic matter, that's easy. And then five next lit plates. Now next lit plates, as I've said before, is tailings. Uh, it is simply tailings. Chances are, if you want to be really efficient about things, you can just route all of your uh, tailings from around your base that are being produced as byproducts and make be able to make way more than enough than you will ever need. This is five, though, so maybe only think about this after you set up a little bit more advanced next lit processing uh, in like beyond just washing your next lit going a little bit beyond where the heck did I even here going a little bit beyond this step or this step I should say uh, for your next lit processing uh, going just a little bit further down uh, later on this is like your preview of what next lit's going to look like I have not completed my Write up of this yet or gone through, but yeah, an excellent. It can be done really efficiently, uh, and this is like just the output of three per second in. So, or it's it's the output of the equivalent of a twelve hundred per second pipe of tailings in ish, which is like three nexlet raw nexlet per second processing into all of this. So, yeah, it's it's good. It's good. It's really uh. It's really efficient, and you should never be bothered by Nexlet. Granted, the footprint to feed the tailings would make things relatively, like, this I think would win out in the end, uh, if you actually are looking at the footprint for the Nexlet, but options. Options. Anyway, that goes in, that gives you petroleum from aromatics and hydrogen of course there's always the alternative mine tar convert tar to creosote convert creosote to aromatics that is like the baseline method of getting aromatics uh this method avoids the tar processing if you want to make tar yourself or otherwise mine it and send in aromatics get petroleum or you know just make petroleum the normal boring way of uh, actual normal oil processing. Yeah, but that's, that's you know, that's boring. So, <laughs> moving on. That's MIBC. And I will reference back to this uh, again on the titanium video. This will give you the tailings dust that you have to deal with. The next step will require organic solvent. Organic solvent, I have discussed, I think, in the past. I have changed my mind since the previous discussion of organic solvent. Uh, I believe previously I was like, oh hey, this recipe using bone meal and olefins is pretty great. It is great. It is a lot of bone meal, and it is a big footprint on bone meal. So, definitely weigh how much space you want to use for your organic solvent production because this recipe in oil refineries, vanilla oil refineries, using acetone, which you're going to be producing anyway out of tholins, and syngas is basically free as well. Uh, through any sort of tar production setup uh, that you may or may not have at this point. Uh, converting your coal gas into syngas with oxygen, of course. Uh, it makes organic solvent pretty 
darn easy to get in relatively large amounts uh, without having to deal with bone meal whatsoever. And it gives you a bit of uh, ammonia as well as a byproduct. So bear that in mind. Once we get into processing of the tin solution, so this was powdered into solution. The solution will go into bottom pulp and middle pulp. You will need sand in, so sand in here. The next step, converting your middle pulp into slime, is going to need a tiny little bit of chromium. A, rel a pretty insignificant amount of chromium. You're probably swimming in chromium if you've gone molten before setting this up uh, at any point. And then we get into the bottom pulp into concentrate. Again, sand in. And then the slime into overflow. Requires no outside inputs, just have to deal with the uh, tailings and the water in. Here we've got soda ash regeneration solution for the overflow processing into pulp one. Now, soda ash, I don't think I have this out here, but I think I've discussed it in a previous tutorial. Soda ash, I will point out saline water plus ash. I've mentioned methods of getting saline water, of course, stone into saline is also quite simple to do um, as well. I haven't really discussed stone all that much, but uh, there are plenty of methods. It's a byproduct of a lot of stuff. There are plenty of ways of getting very, very good amounts of stone uh, that you can use to make into wonderful, beautiful stuff, even if you're spending uh, iron resources to uh, get it from sand extractors or even ground boring it. I really don't suggest ground boring it, but to each their own. There is the coarse fraction, of course. Uh, that you can also do if you get coarse fraction. Fading back, if you're spending your stone on tar, which supposedly is the, quote, best way of getting tar. I'd like to know how they get all that stone to begin with, but, uh, because I, the way I see it, it's, uh, it's iron into stone-based tar that feeds back on itself by processing the coarse fraction, but anyway... That is a topic for another time. Soda ash, relatively free. Saline plus ash. Ash is like... Burn literally anything, and you get ash out of it. And that will give you your pulp one. Your pulp one will become your concentrate in this step that is going to require just a little bit of grease. Just a little bit of grease. I believe I've talked about grease before. Uh, and some filtration media, so bear uh, that in mind. So, going into our high tin concentrate, which is the end of blue science, our outside inputs end up being our MIBC, sand, chromium, organic solvent, grease filtration media, and soda ash regeneration solution. That is all you really need, bearing in mind that MIBC is also going to be a little bit of a draw on your copper plates on top of your chromium. That is all you get access to at Blue Science. Now, Blue Science, as I've mentioned, has the tin concentrate molten as well as your high tin concentrate molten, of course. High tin concentrate molten is pretty objectively better pretty objectively better uh, as a uh, overall process uh, to get your molten out of this so that will be that this will also produce sand as an output so you will have to deal with a byproduct of sand as well as an input of sand uh, you can choose to do with that what you will 
Yellow Science. At Yellow Science, you will now be able to turn your high 10 concentrate all the way up into centered without even bothering stopping at high grade, even though there is the option to process high grade. Starting up, you will be converting your solid high tin concentrate into pulp 2. This will need oleochemicals and kerosene and pressured air, and it will actually output sulfuric acid as a byproduct, uh, so bear that in mind. Now, kerosene, we haven't really seen too much of yet. Uh, so as a reminder, as a reminder, mushrooms convert into coal, converts into tar, converts into saline water, with tailings as an output, a lot of tailings as an output that you can convert into ba -ba -ba, crude oil. Crude oil and olefins and steam just by adding some aromatics to the tailings. And hey, guess what? We just discussed aromatics again. I've said this, I've discussed methods of getting aromatics in several tutorials now. Uh, there's a good reason for that. You might want to know about it. You might want to memorize that. And then crude oil, of course, one-to-one -one into heavy oil through steam cracking, uh, and then heavy oil converts directly into kerosene uh, from there. So this gives you infinite supplies of crude without having to mine crude from any resource node uh, and without having to do drilling fluid from pump jacks for it. So... Yeah, this is this is a nice little setup here for for your crude oil, let alone for your heavy oil and your kerosene. Bearing in mind, this isn't a complete setup here. I'm using the Infinity Mod to deal with the outputs of the uh, iron oxide and the coke. You can, of course, further process coke into a bit more uh, tar and coal gas, which is currently being burned here, by the way. But you can totally convert that coal gas into sin gas for later on. Uh, so that is the kerosene. We've already previously discussed oleochemicals in iron and copper, so I will not go over that again. It is lard and nichrome. Lard and nichrome are the two things that go into that effectively. Then we get into Pulp 2 and Pulp 3, and this is going to be the first time we've seen biofilm being required. Now, bearing in mind that this is at yellow science on the tin, where this will be required, there are two recipes that will be available to you for biofilm. Uh, one is available a lot earlier than the other. This is the one that is available earlier uh, than the other. This recipe converts phalagi substrate, aka mushrooms plus coke, and is the ingredient that you use to make red science from your mushrooms, lime, which is limestone plus coke, limestone from soil, mushrooms from soil, coke from coal from mushrooms, organic matter from logs, and then rayon. Rayon's going to be the uh, like the kick in the teeth here for the uh, for the biofilm, especially since it's a one to one into biofilm. So you can actually think of this as spending rayon here. That's that's how I would think of this as you're you're spending rayon, uh, but biofilm. Uh, suffice to say that rayon, while it's a big setup to do, there is of course methods of getting all of the stuff you need to make the rayon from organic and water-based sources. Uh, so definitely bear that in mind. Biofilm also has this recipe in a nano assembler available to it using resolin, which is going to need meat, uh, which is only available at the moment through Zipier processing. Uh, that's as of this recording. This will, of course, change of 
with alien life, with Pi alien life, uh, where you'll be where you will be able to specifically process biotic sources into just meat or just skin or just bones and whatever else they may provide. So bearing that in mind that currently the only way to get meat is if you're rendering zip here into meat, skin, bones, and blood. Uh, as long as you're able to deal with that multi-output stuff, you can... At this point in the game, you probably already are to get collagen anyway, and you're focusing on skin, and you might be voiding meat, or you might be shoving as much meat and bones as you can into the uh, jaw crusher recipe to make bone meal out of it, if you really want to. Uh, just use some of the meat for this. Yeah, just just use some of the meat for uh, for resolin, because you're probably going to need resolin, because it's sort of needed for a utility science pack item. You're, you're gonna need the resolin. You're gonna need the resolin. And then this stuff is also another thing for utility science pack. You're gonna need it for your yellow science anyway, so you probably already have it. Similarly with the sub-denier microfiber, chances are you probably already have it here at this point in the game. It's used for your T3 robots, your high-tech robots. It's used for your condo substrate, which is used in the production of your intelligent units, which is your circuit fours. Yes, these are your circuit fours, which, hey, guess what? They're used for yellow science anyway. So at this point in the game, you are already making resolin and subdenier microfiber nitrogen is free well there's tholins for it but it's also available through a ddc recipe making purest nitrogen gas that you can also filter into nitrogen so uh, this biofilm recipe ends up being convenient if you're doing the subdenier microfibers and the resolin at scale for yellow science anyway just scale it up scale it up i mean acrolene yeah that, that looks free to me that looks pretty free to me anyway that may be the better process at Yellow Science, so do bear that in mind, uh, and it will spare you the gigantic footprint of a massive rayon setup, which you probably also already have at Yellow Science if you're doing particle accelerator recipes for anything. Anything, because rayon is used for crystallographic substrate. Uh, so if you're doing particle accelerator recipes for... I don't know, molybdenum plates, which you should absolutely be doing. Uh, that uh, would mean that you already have built something for rayon at scale, making either recipe for biofilm a very viable option. Moving on from there, it is a very simple process going into high tin mix, going into high grade tin. Note! High grade tin is going to give you iron ore dust. Iron ore dust is a byproduct at high grade tin. You can do with this what you will. You can choose to get a little bit more iron. A little bit more molten iron. You can shove it into your uh, molten chain. Iron ore dust is pretty early in the iron processing chain. In fact, iron ore dust is this step right here going into your pulp and your slime. This step right here. So you can feed it into this and scale up accordingly um, down the line. And uh, that will ultimately mean more. More iron. More iron by doing tin. Uh, of course, from here, you are going to reduce your high-grade tin by adding sodium sulfate 
and diesel and pressured air. This is identical to most of what we've seen already uh, for the reduction recipes. It's pretty much always going to be sodium sulfate and diesel in on reduction and then lime and syngas in on sintering. There is a, an exception to this once we get into one of these next steps down here. Not titanium, but what we will be covering next, which will be aluminium. Aluminium has a difference. Has a difference. It will be iron oxide instead of sodium sulfate at uh, reduction. But anyway, that will give you centered tin in the end, and you will have way more molten tin than you will ever know what to do with, considering that even just 75 units of the stuff, even just 75 units of the stuff is going to give you way more than a red belt. It's going to give you more than a red belt of output of tin plates, even at just 75 units. So, yeah, you'll, you'll get a lot of tin, and then the only alloy tin is involved with the only alloy tin is involved with is tin chromium alloy this stuff is used exclusively as a catalyst uh, in produ production of other things processes that you are probably getting in alternative means anyway uh, in much more efficient ways uh, that won't need a catalyst like this, you're probably already avoiding the need for these types of catalysts. They're all options available to you, but I would personally not suggest doing any of these processes that use tin chromium alloy because there are better alternatives to all of them. That's that's my thoughts on that. So, ultimately, you can completely skip tin chromium alloy. You can completely skip it, and it won't even matter. You are fully capable of completing everything in the game every process that you need to get through space science and to launch your rockets and all of that good stuff and end the game, quote-unquote, without getting the uh, tin alloy at this point in the game. I want to make that very clear. In the current state of Pyandon's mods, as of this recording, that is the case. Every use of the tin alloy is for a catalyst for something that has, frankly, better options to it. So otherwise, you're just going to get yourself an absolute ton of tin plates. More than you will probably ever use. <laughs> probably more than you will ever use. Or at least, if you do need more. All of this is just processing one yellow belt of or in so bear that in mind you're you're gonna have quite a bit of plates for one yellow belt of titan of a uh, tin ore just you know as they say double it and you'll be fine double it and you'll be fine if you do find yourself starting to run out of stuff yeah just just do the Factorio thing and double when in doubt. So with that, we've reached the end of the tin processing chain overview tutorial thingy my doodad. Tin has been slightly different than everything else thus far that has been covered. There are a lot of similarities overall with the iron and copper chain in the very beginning and you will see uh, overall that the beginnings of the chains are actually very very similar and you'll start getting used to 
the types of setups that exist early on in the chains. Uh, it does diverge quite significantly as you go down into and beyond green science. These are going to be a little bit harder of outside inputs to obtain, uh, specifically the MIBC uh, down here, because you are going to need to set up some stuff that you might not have set up already uh, to get this, and you're going to be using plates of other processes for this, in particular copper and chromium in the end. Uh, this is It is not a relatively insignificant amount of sand. It is used in at least two points on here for sand. So definitely going to have to keep in mind the footprint for the sand. As well as the footprint on the filtration media. Which will also mean that you will be spending just a tiny bit of zinc uh, for the filtration media. Because uh, zinc chloride is needed for the activated carbon. On the filtration media, this is also a lot of gravel and pure sand and glass for the filtration media. I think. Uh, otherwise, organic solvent you may or may not already have at scale. And then the soda ash regeneration solution you also may or may not have at scale. So, it's a relatively big footprint in the end, I think, for the uh, outside inputs here. But ultimately... Not that bad. Ultimately worth doing in the end for your outputs. Of course, you end up stopping with high tin concentrate rather than going all the way up to high grade. At blue science, high grade is locked behind yellow, which ultimately means that you're going to step up from high tin all the way up to centered in one go, most likely once you hit yellow science. And this difference uh, is should be pretty massive. The difference between blue and yellow sciences uh, for the ore processing chains is designed to be pretty big. Uh, a pretty big night and day difference. Uh, just like going to blue science is designed to be a bit of a night and day difference between what came before at green. Most of the time most of the time so with that I would like to thank you all for watching this has been Otaku Showboat don't forget to leave a comment like subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep these videos higher in the YouTube search results for Pyandon's tutorials you can head over to twitch.tv slash otakushowboat to leave a follow to watch my streams on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to approximately 1 p.m. U.S. time, unless that has changed. If that has changed, you can go to my website at otakushowboat.com to my stream schedule page to see what the current schedule is. You can follow me on Twitter at otakushowboat. And you can help support my continued existence as well as help to accelerate the production of these tutorials by heading over to patreon.com slash otaku showboat. You can also, of course, help with the further continuation of the development of the Pyanodon's mod set by supporting Pyanodon at patreon.com slash Pyanodon. The next tutorial is going to be that of aluminium, and I hope to see you all then.